Hello, this is Konstantinos Lazarakis, Master of Wine, and I ran out of colored sweaters, and the spring is here, so it's going to be a shirt from now on, and this is the seventh episode of E Greek Wine, a series of educational videos from the Greek Wine Federation. And it is shirt because we are going on an island, we're going to Crete. But if you talk to people coming from there, they'll tell you that Crete is not an island, it's a nation and it's an idea. And you know, the common thing between great nations and great ideas is the ability to turn things around. As far as wine is concerned, the Cretan wine producers are the kings and the queens of spin. Few decades ago, Cretan wine was synonymous with wine sold in bulk at really low prices and really low quality. It was a wine made to be consumed by thirsty tourists in all-inclusive resorts of the island. Nowadays, nothing came close to this. Cretan producers proved that their wine can be branded high quality but still very affordable. If you need any more convincing about drinking wine from Crete, you shouldn't really. Just think of this. Cretan gastronomy, it's world-renowned. It's one of the most majestic ways of feeding a homo sapiens. Keep that. In Crete, wine is food. It's a part of everyday table. It's a part of our diet. If you think Cretan gastronomy is great, then by definition, the local wine is great as well. Understanding the climate of Crete is fascinating and it's easy for a change. It's an island, so water all around, but there is a central spine of really high mountains running from end to end. All the main cities are facing towards the north because of trade and cultural connections with the rest of mainland Greece, but so do vines. By planting vineyards on north-facing slopes, you go away from the hot winds blowing from Africa and instead you enjoy the cooling breezes of the Aegean Sea. Crete is really big. It takes more than six hours to drive through the entire island. So it's divided in four prefectures starting from west to the east. It's Chania moving on to Rethino then we have Iraklio and ending up on the city. In these videos it's always a big big problem where to start and where to finish, so we will do exactly what I said. We will start with Chania. Chania is not as important in terms of volume as Iraklio is, but there is no shortage of jewels. If I have to come up with something about Chania, it's tradition in progress. I have to make a confession on camera. I travel around my country trying to understand the wines of Greece and occasionally I come across wine styles of the past that are completely neglected by modern wine drinkers, possibly because these were the styles that our grandfathers were fond of. And the closer I get to these wines I understand that they can be revived into something completely relevant to the modern wine world. If I had to pick one of these from Chania, that would be Maruvas wine from the Kisamos area. Maruvas is a pale red wine from Romeico, a grape variety that is low in tannin, low in acid and high in alcohol. Maruvas is always aged for a long time in oak barrels and a lot of people are making blends across vintages like a form of Solera. Also, these barrels are not topped up, so there is a bit of headspace that provides a hint of oxidation to these wines. If you enjoy orange wines, natural wines, Madeira, Sherry, we have been doing that centuries ago. Try some Maruvas. In Greece, we have a thirst for international grapes. But when Greek producers wanted to focus on international grapes, essentially they were planting Bordeaux grape varieties, mainly Merlot, Cabernet Sauvignon, you can include Sauvignon Blanc in this group. 
Only Chardonnay is a widely planted international grape in Greece that is not coming from Bordeaux. But some people look at the climates across many winemaking regions in Greece and they say, hmm, you know, maybe these grape varieties are not the proper choice. Maybe if you were looking into grapes coming from Rome, northern or southern Rome, would make a lot more sense. This is how Cri and essentially Hanya lead the way, producing some lovely examples from these grape varieties. Maruvas is a peek into tradition. Rome grape varieties is, in a way, having a peek to what other countries are doing and doing it as well. Do you want a peek into the future? You stay in Hanya and you come up with Muscat of Spinas. Muscat of Spinas comes from the village of Spina and it is a member of the greater Muscat family. It produces dry wines that have all the hallmark characteristics of Muscat but they're usually far more full-bodied and yet fresher. Next up is Rethymno, the least active area in terms of wine production on the island. There is a small number of wine producers, but it's getting hired by the vintage. However, Rethymno gave the key to the mint to all wine producers on the island, and the mint is Vidiano. Vidiano is a white grape variety that, although it originates from Rethymno, it is now cultivated across Crete and in several other areas in mainland Greece. It gives dry white wines that are very peachy, still with a hint of herb on the nose, while on the palate they have broadness and an oily texture that is more charming than you would think. There are wines aged in oak, in acacia, in amphora, and every single example on the market makes you beg for a bit more.